let's start. Okay, now we're going to divide our day to four parts. Okay, we're going to do four parts. So first part is we will be doing the forces part. Just all these like resolve, resolve the. Part two, we'll do a bit of heat, which is uh, on gas law. Part three, we'll do a bit of electric series parallel calculation. But I hope if we got time, we'll do part four, okay? Which is a bit of light, okay? So if you guys got no problem, then let's start right now. Okay, so <clears throat> can we see here number one? So this is a traffic light mass 20 kg hanging. So obviously, this is about resolution of forces. So the, 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 you know, you shift, shift, shift the force off. So number one, okay, when we look at this question, very typical, they always ask you, what is meant by forces in equilibrium? Or if not this, then they will ask you, uh, what is a resultant force? Something like this, lah, okay? So for these forces in equilibrium, your answer is actually, it is whereby the resultant force acting on the object is equals to zero. Just uh, all the force that acting on the object is equals to zero. Uh. Some teachers there, they're very mafan one. So they want you to actually explain what is resultant force. So because they say, when you say resultant force, you need to explain. So if you want to explain resultant force, resultant force is actually the sum of forces in all directions. Okay, so you can either write Resultant force acting on the object is zero, or you can write sum of forces in all directions acting on the object is equal to zero. Okay, so you got two answers. You write uh, if your teacher don't mind resultant force, then you write resultant force based on diagram four. Okay, now upper is this. So they want you to draw a triangle of forces that acts on the traffic light. Okay, when we look at this question here, we have this. This sounds like this thing, and we need to be able to find the tension in the string. So we have to find the tension in the string. So the force in the string is tension. Okay. So how do you draw a triangle? So when you draw your triangle of forces, you need to have three force multiple. Right? So you've got tension, tension, and then what is the third force here? So tension, tension. The third force is always thank you very much will be W law, all right? So now what you need to do is you just need to susungan the whole thing, arrange everything into a triangle, then boom, you get your answer already, okay? So let me just uh, agak agak lah, okay? So if let's say this, now the first one I'll draw is W. Okay, it doesn't matter which T you draw first. You can draw the left T first, or you can draw the right T, it doesn't matter. So in this case now, I will draw the right-hand side punya T first, so I'll get this T, this direction, this one will be this direction. So now I'm left with what? The last T that goes this direction oh, towards the left. Oh. So if I join this together, you will realize that this is the tension. The bottom one is the tension. It will go in a circle. Now remember guys, whenever you draw a triangle, after you finish drawing, right, you need to ask yourself, is this system in equilibrium or not? Are they in the equilibrium or not? Okay, because if you hang something, then obviously the answer is yes, this thing is in equilibrium. If this is in equilibrium, my force has to turn circle, has to go down, then go up, then come back down. It has to move in a circle. All right, Ken? So that is your resultant force. Uh, sorry, your triangle of forces. Okay, now, however, if I put this into my answer, uh, my teacher will still minus my mark. Can anybody tell me why? Why this, this is still wrong? Correct. Because you have to label angles. If you know your force, then you label force. If you got angle, then label angle. So now, we know that this is 20 degree gun. So which means that if I draw a vertical line that goes down, so this side of the angle is how, how much? This is going to be 70 degree. Oh. Okay. So these two forces, these two tension, is going to be the same. So this is actually in Mandarin, we call this Teng Yao San Chiao Sing. In English is what? Uh isosceles angle, is it? Yeah. So therefore this is going to be 70 degree 
this is going to be 70 degree. Okay, so we've got 70 degree, 70 degree. Then if we know then this will be 40 degree. Lor. Okay, 140, 180. Ma. Totally, yeah. Okay. No, la, this is called isosceles. La. Right angle is a 90 degree. La. Okay, now, so that that's how to start it is to get two marks. Okay, then next, we go into if they are in equilibrium, calculate the weight and calculate the tension. Okay, for this one, guys, at this point, if you have your own method, you can use your own method. But if you don't know what method to use, you can follow my method for the tension. Okay, but before that, let's look at the weight first. Now, ask you one question now. In our Zaman right now, one kg is actually how many newton? Wah, Suying, cannot la. 9.81 newton la. Where got people 10 newton? 10 newton is the form 3 nian tai, that one zaman, not wah wah, zaman jahila already. This one is, yes, correct. Your W equals to FG ma. So our G value is actually 9.81 ma, do So 1 kg is 9.81 newton ah. Please ah. Please ah, okay. Now, so what is the mass of this traffic like 20 kg? So 20 kg, we go all the way down here. So W equals to mg, the mass is 20 kg, gravity 9.81. So if 20 times 9.81, so what do I get here? Is it 19.62 Newton? So that is the weight of the traffic light. Eh? 0.62, nah? Yeah. Oh. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. It's 196.2 Newton. Okay. So, yes, thank you very much. Now, so once we are done with this, we have to find the tension of each string three marks. Okay, now, I personally don't really like to draw the triangle. So, people who know me will know that my favorite method to solve this question is what we call the Jesus Christ method. So, what we do here is we will draw like a cross first. And then after having this cross, we will draw a line that goes all the way down. So this is your weight law. Okay, this is your weight law. Your weight is 196.2 Newton. Okay, then the past two, your force is this direction. Okay, this is your 20 degree tension. Then here also got uh, tension. This is also 20 degree. Okay, so we got tension, tension, this one. Okay, so according to this Jesus Christ method, the rule of Jesus Christ method is whoever sesiapa that is not along this not along this cross, we will have to shift it away. So now just let's just do a small recap. Okay, so we know so ka toa, cross is so a uh, ka, then so is s o sine equals to opposite over hypotenuse, right? Okay, so sine is related to opposite, cos is related to adjacent. How do we know this is uh, opposite or adjacent? Okay, so we see here, this is theta. So if we look at the blue color line, we call this the adjacent line. Why? Because it is touching the angle. And we will call the purple color line here, we call opposite line. Why? Because it didn't touch the angle. So... The opposite house is not touching your house, right? This opposite means here, ma. It's not touching one, right? So if it's touching, it's adjacent. Kalau not touching, we call it as opposite. Understand? Okay, next. So we come here. So if this is my shizia, my holy cross, this one, no problem. We can just use this 196.2 Newton. For this tension and this tension, we need to move them. We need to move them up and down, correct? So if I want to move this tension downwards, I will have to use this thing called T, guys, cos or sine 20. Can you tell me? Cos or sine 20. So because touching, my right? Yeah, it is touching, right? Thank you, everybody. Cos 20. Then after that, this one also have to pin the atas, right? Correct? So we're going to have a T sine 20. So this tension can go in case really. We can throw it away already. Okay, le pass it too. Okay, so there's a plus here, correct? Now, so this T, we also have to move this down and move this up. Why? Because, uh, okay, there's nothing here already. 
there's nothing here already. There's nothing here already. Now I'm left with one key on the left top corner. So if I want to move this down, this is going to be T cos 20. Then this is going to be T sin 20. So what I have on top here is actually a T sin 20 plus T sin 20. Now the left and right not important because these two will cancel each other out. So if I shift these two up, it's T sin 20 plus T sin 20. And because God is fair, right? Correct. So whatever that's up and down will always be balanced. If my up and down is balanced, so the up is going to be T sine 20 plus T sine 20 will be equals to the down force. The down force is 196.2 Newton. Okay. So now how to find T? So last time, my math's very new. So how to do this? The smartest way to do it is to use, correct, A plus A is 2A. So this is going to be T sine 20 plus T sine 20 will be 2T sine 20 equals to 196.2 Newton. So my tension, how much? Can any kind so help me to divide by 2 and divide by sine 20? It will be 286.83 Newton. Yes, thank you very much. Okay, uh, Joe, uh, 625 also can, uh, 63 also can. Uh. So there you go. This is your calculation. Okay, now, so in this case, we managed to get 286.83 Newton uh, for each tension of the string. Okay, so uh, you can copy this solution to your space in your book. Because I need a picture here, so I write in front. Okay, meaning to say that you can copy here. Really? So you can shift this up. Like okay, uh, can I? Uh, all right, now I give you 10 seconds. Anybody got any questions to ask? Okay, digest this a little bit. Yes, correct, Manchen. Cost is because it is touching the line. So we will take cost of this angle. Okay, why the vertical line is sine 20? Because the 20 is not touching the cost. How do you remember is T sine or T cost? Very simple. Okay. Um yeah, example uh, uh so you, okay, now ask you a question. If this is tension, okay, now um this one first question said ah. Uh, so we got this thing. Okay. So let's say if this is um 50 degree. Okay. So we got line A and line B. Do you know how to see which line is adjacent line? So A or B, which one is adjacent line? A ma adjacent ma so ka dua ma. So sine is opposite over hypotenuse, cos is adjacent. Ma. If you know this A is adjacent, means that A is cos. Lo. So this is going to become T cos 50. Lo. Okay. So B will be T sine 50 lo, because 50 is not touching the angle. Ma. Okay. Yeah. All right. Very simple, so very easy, the very direct. Okay, if you got no problem uh touching the angle, okay, we will see the next part whereby here we have so if the horizontal angle between the cable and the traffic light increases, what will happen to the cable tension? Okay, meaning to say that sekarang in this picture right now, um the cable between uh, the angle and the traffic light. So we need to say this angle lah, they are looking at, all right, this angle. Okay, if this angle increases, okay, let's say, I erase everything. Okay, so if now I have this versus this, right, correct, okay. So let's just say that if now this one end up become 40 degrees, Okay, double the angle. Okay, what you should do is you should calculate your tension. Okay, 
you have calculated when this is 20 degree, your tension T is actually 286.63 Newton Martin. So if now 40 degree, takkan you don't know how to calculate, right guys? You try and calculate if this is 40 degree, what will you get? One hundred and fifty two. No, where got times two mansion? Mei you jiang zi. It's angle you have to count ah. Yes, thank you. One, zi xue one five two point six two newton. Okay, so which means that here, we have already realized that when your angle increase, okay, your tension in the string will. Decrease, right? Correct. So what happens here is that your angle will decrease, right? I mean, when your angle increase, your tension will decrease, right? So therefore, we can say the tension in the cable decreases. The tension in the cable decreases. Okay, uh. okay, now, so which means, let me ask you one question. Which is a better method for hanging? Okay. So I don't want you to memorize the angle. Remember, the idea is you need your lines to be as straight, as vertical as possible so that you can reduce the tension in the string. You need these two lines to be as vertical as possible. Okay. So if you compare this one, if this one becomes, let's say, 70 degree, even better, because it will be more vertical, okay? For this one also, you want it to be more vertical. Okay, so tension will decrease. Okay, now, before I go to the next part, now, there are two types of question related to resolution of forces. Okay, this type of question is what we call resolution of forces. Now, in this resolution of forces question, this question is in equilibrium. So we will take up and down to be equals. Up and down balance are correct. Now, what if your teacher decided to ask you a question whereby the force are not balanced? Like how? Okay, maybe they will say, today you are given an object. This object is now being pulled to the right uh, the one, okay, it's pulled downwards 10 newton, it's being pulled to the left with uh 15 newton, and it's now being pulled this direction, okay, like that, uh, uh 60 degree with a force of let's say uh 40 newton, although uh 40 newton, uh, okay, so they will ask you, so what is the resultant force acting on the object? What is the resultant force acting on the object? So how do we solve this kind of question? How to find the resultant force? Okay. Now your problem is your force is all sanged. Okay. I mean, not all. Uh, we got one sanged force. 115, 110. Uh, okay. If got more sanged, also never mind. How do we do this? We will still use the holy cross method. Okay. So what we're going to do here is we'll put this cross first. So we will copy the question down. So this is 10 Newton. This is 15 Newton. And let's say this is 40 Newton. Okay. Now, so what is the purpose of this method is it will allow us to know which one need to split. Okay, this one, okay, no problem. Because this one is already following the cross. Got Follow the cross there. It's already on the cross. Then this one, also no problem. Okay, this one also no problem because it's already cross layer. So now what we need to do is with this one need to pindakan. So this one we have to shift it down and up. So if we want, what we're going to do here is we try to move this upwards and move this to the right hand side. So if you shift this down, it's going to become 40 cos 60. And you shift this up, it's going to be 40 sine 60. Why? Because 
your angle here touching is cos. The angle is touching the bottom line. So that's cos. Angle not touching the top line, right? Because your angle here, your line on top. So it's on the other side. So that is your sine 60. So, okay, once we resolve already, this one happens. Okay, what is next? For the next step, for the next step, okay, we will start to calculate 40 cos 60 is how much? 20 newton, correct? 40 sine 60 is how much? Uh, well, this I cannot. Uh, 0 0.66. What for? 34 by 64. Hmm. So this one is actually equivalent to 34.64 Newton. Okay, because I count already, so I, I made this into this. So what is next here is, we will see, okay, vertically, 34.64 go up, then go down. So where will my force be? So 34 and 10, right? They go opposite direction, which means that the resultant force is a force that's going up is 24.64 Newton. Right. Left hand side is 15 versus 20. Go where? To the right law. Okay, so very good. So go to the right law. So this one will go to the right. 5 Newton. Why? Because we minus it off, right? Okay, so now, after we solve everything, we can only remain with two forces, one vertical, one horizontal. We can only have two forces left. So if this is 24.64, if the horizontal is 5, so how to find my resultant force? My resultant force is this one, right? So we have to use this thing called Pythagoras theorem. So how to Pythagoras theorem? This is 24.64 Newton plus 5 Newton. So uh, what we have to do here is we have to square them. Then you square root gun them. Correct? So once you square root them, you will get blah, blah, blah Newton, which is 25.14 Newton. Okay, so what is the difference between these two methods? Okay, what is the difference between these two methods? Okay, so what's the difference between this method? Okay, so both start with Shizia. Okay, both start with the cross. Uh, one is for equilibrium, your up and down balance, left and right balance, which means your force is balanced. Huh? Now for the non-balance one, huh, because this object will have a resultant force. So this one you have your last step, you have to use Pythagoras theorem. So that is the difference between this step and this step. Okay, I can now. Now, you guys will realize that after 20 minutes, this class is for people who actually got study a little bit. Uh. So if you are kosong today, you can watch the other video which I've posted on how to do sign cost. Uh. Okay, I have a separate video on how to do sign cost. Can? Okay, so therefore one is with resultant force, one is with no resultant force. Two methods. Okay, so we look at our watch half an hour plus layout. Okay, half an hour plus layout. So this is where we go to the next part of our today's stuff. Okay, Ken. Now, wait, I mean, pause my recording. Uh, okay. Now, for this one, is the pressure of Mr. Fuzzly. Na, 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 Okay. Um, so, what happens here is, okay, uh, based on this picture, um, what is the gas law involved? So, gas law, we got BCG, ma, right? Boyles, Charles, and Gay, ma, correct? So, um, how to remember? I remember like this. Charles liked to watch TV. Charles like to watch TV. Boys like to watch porn video. But porn video must hide and watch. So the video is at the bottom. Then gay like to watch what? 3P. So this is 3P. So now we got 
child like to watch TV, boys like to watch porn video, they like to watch 3P. So what is the gas law involved, guys? What is the gas law involved? So now we see here, in this case, the, the pressure changes. Okay, so 220 to 230, right? So what happens here is that pressure got changed. Huh? Pressure, pressure. Lah. So now, um, Malcolm, the pressure actually increased, right? Means the pressure got changed. So it's either boils or gay. Lah. Can't be Charles. Lah. Okay, next. Now, if you drive a car, what will happen to the tire? The tire obviously will become hot, right? So, temperature and pressure. So, this is called gay Luzak law. Okay, gay Luzak law. Gay, or gay Luzak law. Okay, ah, okay, uh, once you are done. Next, we will look at the next one. Just based on kinetic theory of gases, why pressure of air in the tire increases when the temperature increases? Okay, first of all, why tire inside got pressure? So more tire inside got pressure leh? Okay, I cannot help, I, I can't draw a tire, but I'm just gonna draw a container. Okay. So inside a container got volume, got air molecules. Uh -huh. Then why air molecules got why air molecules got some more? Leh? Got pressure leh? Got kinetic energy. Uh -huh. Then they collide. Then the Uh -huh. Okay, so the answer is this guy. Okay, the answer is this. Do you think? Oh? Okay, first of all, we have to focus on this temperature increase. Temperature increase. So when your temperature increase, the first thing is kinetic energy of your molecules or of your air molecules will increase. Lah, all right. Now, this question can be four marks, uh, just so you know. So when temperature increase, kinetic energy of molecules will increase. So what happens? The frequency of collision between frequency of collision between your air molecules and wall of tire. Now they very pantang one, you know, guys. You have to say the collision between who and who. Because in chemistry, we will say rate of reaction is due to the collision, what effective collision between air molecules, right? But in physics, we say about is the collision between the air molecules on the wall of container. In this particular example, this is wall of tire. Okay, Ken? So, um, wall of tire, air molecules, uh, frequency collision between air molecules and wall of tire increases. Okay. So therefore, um, you will produce impulsive force, produce a higher impulsive force on the wall of tire. So therefore, pressure inside tire increases. Now, I know that this is very long. But this can come up as a four marks question. So that's why I try to put more points just in case your exam come out this four marks. Okay, ah, no problem. Ah. Now, I will do you a favor. I will give you the formula. Okay. Now, calculate the temperature of the tires after arriving at EPO. So this is P1 to T1. This is P2 to T2. You got formula here. So what is the um Sama? What is the answer? I already give you the formula. Okay. I give you all some time to think. Let me pause my recording first. Okay. So what we have here is we got 20.91 degrees Celsius. Then we got 33.32 degrees Celsius. Lagi, lagi. So what did you get? Okay, guys. If today you are watching this video, make sure you count before you, you pause now and then you try first and you look at the answer. Okay, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Okay, based on my experience, right, guys, the first answer that come out is always wrong, Bunya. 
based on my experience. Okay, why? Because hmm, not careful enough. Okay, when we look at this kind of question, what is the typical trick? So Anushri, don't you think this question is a bit too easy? Okay, so the pressure says 220 kilo. So it's 220,000, 230,000, right? Okay. If you forgot to write the thousand, never mind, because they are both thousands. So, but to make sure that it's more careful, I will change it to kilo. Okay, but, uh, so if you don't change also, never mind. But the next one must change. What is that? That is your Kelvin. So if today you start at 20 degrees Celsius, because gas law, we have to change it to Kelvin. This is 20 plus 273. And I can tell the first, first one shown nobody, sure everybody didn't change one. So then this is going to be T2. So T2 will be equals to Sanilio. Yeah. So you can leave your answer in terms of Kelvin, or you can also leave it in terms of degree Celsius, since they never say must be in degree Celsius, you can leave it in Kelvin. All right, Ken? So correct, ah. Uh, no problem, ah. Uh. So this is on the heat gas law calculation. Now, so uh, this one very typical. Uh. Okay, for another one more gas law typical calculation, all right, is... The air bubble in the, the other one is the air bubble under the seat. Okay, under the seat. Air bubble under the seat. Okay, I'm going to give you a question. How we know add or minus? Ah, very young, very easy. Okay, see ya. Now, do you know how alphabet, what's the alphabet song? A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, L. So A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K. So C now, then only you go to K, right? All right. Now, so which means that this part is increasing, right? Because A is 1, B is 2, C is 3, D is 4, E is 5. So which means that if you go from C to K, you need to add 273. If you go from K, K is supposed to be a bigger value, mah, right? So you go back here, you minus 273. Okay. So yeah. Hey, very good. Now we got our air bubble under the sea exa example. Okay, this one, okay, I won't do it, lah, but they will always ask you, wow, if the air bubble is uh, 20 meter under the sea, wow, the volume is equal to 3 cmq. If this bubble right now, sampai the water here, what will be the volume of the bubble? Then they'll tell you, you know, we give this thing called atmospheric pressure is equivalent to 10 meters of water, something like that. So this kind of question is very typical. You need to know how to do. This is related to Boyle's law. And Boyle's law. Okay, but I don't want to do it first. Okay. Don't do this first. Ah. Okay. Now, because we are now focusing on this one, so let's go and see this um pressure cooker. Okay, so this is a very simple version of a pressure cooker. So pressure cooker, right? Why must you have the sealer ring? Do you want with sealer ring or no sealer ring? Dengan sealer pengetat or no sealer pengetat? With right, correct? Why? Because what you want to do here is you want to trap the steam inside. Okay, so obviously you want with sealer ring and obviously you want a uh, release waft, right? Guys, the release waft must be bigger or smaller. What's a sealer ring? Ah? Okay, pressure cooker, right? Why can cook very fast is because inside the pressure cooker, the temperature can go very high due to the pressure is very high. So inside your, you know, the rim of Nidanaka, uh, pressure cooker, there's a rubber one. Okay, today, you after the end of this class, you go ask your mommy. If you're in the living room, you go ask your mommy now. Mommy, can get the pressure cooker, the lid, and show me. Uh, 
you will see the pressure cooker, the lid, like a guy has a rubber silicone. So it is to actually prevent the steam from escaping from the side. Okay. Then what about the release valve? The release valve, okay. What is the purpose of the release valve? Why we need a release valve? Anybody can tell me. Okay. Yes. So if today you want to book up the the you scam me. Who scam you? Oh now okay, in this case, baited to my now you see that right? Um the lead are guys, the lead are okay. You will see that uh if you want to book up this thing. When inside has high pressure, what will happen is it is very dangerous because if you book up the thing right, the 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 the, the soap will just fly out. It will just pop like that. So before you can safely open this thing, what you want to do here is you want to actually use this release path whereby you allow the steam to escape first. You understand what I mean? before opening so you need to allow the steam to be released so that the pressure inside can escape baru buka that's why the answer for this is r because r has larger release valve so you can release the steam faster okay yeah don't say exploding uh, guys Exploding is like, oh, it's to prevent steam from escaping, so pressure can increase inside the the pressure cooker. This one got answer now. She can't open. Okay, excess steam to flow out, or you can say to release the pressure. Okay, because see when you ex when you let the steam to come up, what are you doing? You are trying to reduce the pressure, ma. So the, the the secret keyword here is to reduce the pressure before opening the lid. You let the steam out, yeah. But why? Because you want to reduce the pressure. Yeah. Okay. So this one is just on the on the cook uh what are pressure cooker We got one more main the heat question. All right. So let's look at page twenty seven. We are still in heat ah. Uh. We need to go faster. Huh? Okay, so this is an electric steamer. What is the meaning of specific latent heat of vaporization? So latent heat got how many types? Two types, huh? Because you got solid, liquid, and gas biome, right? So solid to liquid, liquid to gas, gas to liquid, liquid to solid. Oh, okay, guys. For some of you who downloaded the one that I posted, right, guys, I accidentally posted the one that I, how to say, uh, I I do myself. The, okay, sometimes I will do latte hat. And uh, don't be surprised that word, the, the word's very ugly. Okay, now, so, <clears throat> so, okay, this is essentially called the specific latent heat of fusion. This is called vaporization. Okay. Now, so latent heat of fusion and latent heat of vaporization punya difference is one is for solid to liquid, the other one is from liquid to gas. Okay. When you go towards the right hand side, all the process is about absorbing the heat. So, semua semua ni adalah absorb, absorb, and then everything towards the left hand side. These are all what process they are. Release heat, so absorb heat, release heat. Okay, so what's the meaning of latent heat of vaporization? Okay, I'm going to write this, and I want you all to tell me if my answer is correct or wrong. Okay, step one. Okay, step one. We will say, what is latent heat? Ah? Latent heat is the heat absorbed to change state. Ah. 
So you state that from solid to liquid, liquid to gas. Uh. Do you know what is this or not? So if this is solid, this is liquid, this is solid and liquid. So why the, the temperature remain con constant? Because heat absorb is used to overcome force of attraction. So your latent heat basically is this solid and liquid, the melting process. Okay, can seeing ah, seeing, I can sense that you need help. If can, my suggestion, try to come physical class. Okay, you have Okay, you just Wednesday leave mm -hmm. Try to consider that. Yeah, at least I can think. So. Okay, now. So what's the meaning of latent heat of vaporization? Okay, everybody look here. So we say it is the heat. Uh, energy required to change one kg substance. So you are trying to change the one kg substance, one kg substance from a vaporization from liquid to gas, eh? from liquid to gas, or from gas to liquid. Okay, it's the heat energy required to change the one kg substance from liquid to gas or gas to liquid. So therefore, is that all guys? Who can tell me this definition? Got apa sala? Jacqueline, that's not fair. Why you know? Yeah, the answer is with no change in temperature. Hey, hello. Itu, itu, pingo, pingo. Mingxing. Changing state or change in temperature or not? No la. During melting, no change in temperature, the ma. So the answer is change ring from liquid to gas or gas from liquid with no change in temperature. So technically here you have no change in temperature. Okay, ah, can ah. Okay, next. They say uh can with no change in temperature, or you can write constant temperature, same meaning. Okay. Now what is the change in temperature? So this steamer, water in the steamer 0 0.5 kg, initial temperature 25, heated until it boils. So what is the change of water temperature? So the change will be from 25 until it boils, right? Correct. 25 until it boils, right? So this is going to be 100 degrees Celsius minus 25 degrees Celsius equals to 75 degrees Celsius. Huh? Okay, next. Calculate the amount of heat needed to, you know, boil your water. So what you're going to need to know here is Okay, because this is change in temperature, okay, in physics, very simple. We got two things only, change in temperature and change in state. Temperature eh, is usually, we will use the MC data. Change in state eh, is ML. Because change in temperature is specific heat capacity. Change in state is latent heat. Okay. Can I so in this case, this is Q equals to MC theta. So um, we are trying to boil 0 0.5 kg the uh, water, 25. So my mass is 0 0.5 kg, specific heat capacity 4,200. Theta will be 75 for Y because it's 100 minus 25. Oh yeah, can I? So in this case, uh, how how many joules is this? Uh, to go? One. Yeah, I don't want the kilo. I want one five seven five. One five seven five. Okay. Or better still, you can change this to standard form.
or less one zero. Okay, boleh jadi, so yeah. Okay, so guys, we are almost approaching one hour already. Okay, so far if you are hanging there, uh, congratulations, you have survived one hour. Okay, can we will see how far more we can go. Okay, then next one, we go to the next page. So the food in the steamer requires 4.8 times 10 to the power 5 joules of heat to be steamed. Calculate the mass of steam produced. So um, okay, because this is about producing heat, steam produced. So this is change in state now, not change in temperature. State is solid to liquid, liquid to gas. That is what we call change in state. So now we will have this to be Q equals to ML. So um, they say that the food requires this much of joules to be steam. So this will be 4.8 times 10 to the power of 5. And then mass is, I don't know how much. Latent heat is 2.26 times 10 to the power of 6. So the mass that's needed is 0 0.212 kg. Okay, can I? Oh, because you all got answer already, right? Let me check. Okay, can. Now next. So they say, if now we have, using the concept of latent heat, explain how food is cooked with electric steamer. Okay, guys, so how are these food cooked by the electric steamer? How? Okay, so let's say today you want to steam fish. So when you want to steam fish, the most important thing is fish up. Okay. So uh so here there is two things that happens. Okay, number one, we can okay, guys, I just write simple answers. Huh? We'll say that the water absorbs heat and forms steam by absorbing latent heat of vaporization, latent heat of vapor. So it will it forms this steam by absorbing latent heat of vaporization. Okay, then you can say the uh, steam rises and condenses on the Fish. Eh. Here they never say fish or they say what? Or they say food. Okay. So don't say fish, ah, okay? Um on the food. Alright. Then after that we say uh condensation releases high amount of latent heat of vaporization to cook food in a short time. Okay, now can in a short time. Okay, can. Okay, if you are done with this thing, okay. Now, what are the most difficult questions in this subtopic? Okay, now, Serline Daripada, they can test you on mixing stuff, right? Okay, let's say, for example, I take hot water, I take cold water, and I mix together, correct? The Palin Susa, I mean, refrigerator is theory. Refrigerator is theory. But the one that is challenging here, calculation apart, uh, is, okay, I give you all a very simple question. Now, uh, I maybe in some classes I gave you all this example, but you see, ah, not all the classes are. Ah. Okay, today I've got hot water. 
有吧？我可以帮你买。Okay. Hot water， 哎，你还 give 我钱？哦呀 ，Monday night， 我可以过了。OK， so the Monday night people， sorry 啊 ，we listen again 啊。Okay, so we see here. Okay, for this one, we have let's say two hundred grams of water. This is boiling water, so hundred degrees Celsius. Okay, yeah, two hundred grams of hundred degrees Celsius water. Now I can put ice. So what I can do right now is I can put ice into this water because I what I want to do now is I want to. I want to bring this final temperature of this thing to become twenty degrees Celsius. So now the question is, how many, how many ice, how much ice? Ah,、uh, how many kg of ice that I need to add so that the water can become twenty degrees Celsius? Okay. So the first thing you need is your ice starts at zero degrees Celsius. By the way, so your ice punya latent heat of fusion is three point three six times ten to the power five. Your specific heat capacity of water is four thousand two hundred. Okay, the unit standard unit ah, joule per kg joule. A kg per degree Celsius. Okay, now let your try to do this. Okay, so you can pause and resume. Okay, so how to do this question is first you have to understand your what. Okay, okay, this is definitely something what we call the heat release is going to be equals to the heat absorbed the naka naka stage. So meaning to say that. The releasing heat is M C theta, right? Why? Because my water is going to go from the water will go from hundred degree Celsius to twenty degree Celsius. So this is the releasing heat. The okay, the releasing heat. The. Okay, then who is going to absorb heat? The ice, right? But in this case, your ice a bit lecher. Your ice, in order to become twenty degrees Celsius, you have to make sure the ice will have to melt first. It has to undergo melting so that your ice jadi water, so that it becomes water at zero degrees Celsius. Baru lah, it from water zero degrees Celsius, then it will become water twenty degrees Celsius. Okay, because you see. When your ice melts, it is actually water, and if it is water, the water will be zero degrees Celsius. So you need it to heat up. You know what I mean? To until twenty degrees Celsius. So for your this right hand side, the you have M C theta plus M L. Okay, Ken. So this is where the thing gets a bit very special. Why M C theta plus M L? Because your ice melt now, it still needs to become twenty degrees Celsius. So your ice has a change in temperature and change in state. So for this left hand side, the mass of your water is two two hundred grams, zero point two. Specific heat capacity of water four thousand two hundred theta will be, ah, eighty degrees Celsius. Then mass of ice is unknown. Specific heat capacity of your melted ice is twenty. Because your ice have to melt, it will become water. Then twenty, my right. Plus the actual ice melting process, zero point three six, three point three six times twelve five. Okay, siapa tak faham water? Anybody help me to count? Ah,、uh, how much is this? Is this zero point one six or zero point zero eight? How small? Hmm. Yeah. To to make it look a bit easier to understand, actually, I write this one first. Maybe you understand better. The ice will melt first. The ice will undergo melting. Then first, 
then only it will become hot. Yes. No, no, no. No, the question is how much ice I have to add inside so that at the end, I will have 20 degrees Celsius of water. Okay. So some people who cannot understand this, okay, actually, you just need help with your imagination. See, ah? You started with water, 100 degrees Celsius. So this is the, the hot water. So your hot water must become water at 20 degrees Celsius. Okay, but then from the other side of the picture is you are given ice at zero degrees Celsius. So finally, your ice also must become back the same ending point, same zong tian, right? So your ice will have to undergo melting first, which then it becomes zero degrees Celsius. At zero degrees Celsius, it will still continue to absorb heat, right? Until it becomes 20 degrees Celsius. So for the hot, the next stage, is only changed in temperature, but for the ice to melt and to become 20 degrees Celsius, this is actually ML and MC theta. Because your melted ice will finally become part of the drink, right? Okay. Okay, if I'm not mistaken, this question came out in your exam before. I answered form for the last term. Okay, Ken. <clears throat> so, uh, what answer do you get here? So many people give me different answer, but I think it's 0 0.16. Ken. Huh? Okay. okay, anybody got any more questions before we go to the next of the subtopic. Okay. Okay. Got question here. <clears throat> if I have a cup of ice and I pour boiling water into the ice cup, if half the cup punya ice melted, do I know the final temperature of the cup? The answer is yes. The answer is yes. Zero degrees Celsius, ah. because the ice haven't melt fully. Ah. Why is there still ice? Because the melting still taking place, right? If the ice melt completely, then I don't know the temperature because already over melting point. But if I pour water in it and the ice haven't fully melted, means the ice is undergo melting, under, still undergoing melting, right? That means that the final temperature is zero. Ah. So in this question, I don't need to do MC data for the ice. Okay, Ken. Yes, Ming Sheng. Correct. Okay, Ken. Now, yeah, the idea is very important. I tell you, uh, I remember, right, about one month ago, a lot of students tell me, hit very easy. Wow. It's like, wow, uh, very easy. Uh. Actually got a lot of pattern on guys. For heat, there's so many different type questions. So many. Okay, uh, can I? Ah, correct, decision Because there's no change in temperature for the ice. Okay, <clears throat> next. So we have 40 minutes left. Okay, not not 40 minutes, probably half an hour left. Huh? Because what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to probably end 10 minutes earlier because we didn't give break time. Okay, so <clears throat> uh, I think we will do electric then about 11 o'clock already. So, okay. We look at page 29, question 11. I think this one also got answered yet. All right. Okay. Now, so... Can you guys do me a favor? Okay. Uh, well, I, I, I do this one first. What's the meaning of electric current? So because current is Q over T, and anything that is divided by time is always known as the rate 
of change of something, right? But then, tada! Good news, so it's not rate of change. This is the rate of flow of. So Q is actually known as what? It is actually known as charge. So electric current is actually known as the rate of flow of charge. Okay, I can uh, rate of flow of charge. Okay, guys, do me a favor. Can you help me to calculate what is the resistance of this emitter right now? How much is the reading of the emitter? Your job. Besides finding the emitter, can you calculate the voltmeter reading as well? Okay. Let's try this thing together. Okay. Now, whenever we do all this circuit circuit stuff, right? Okay. Uh, whenever we do all this circuit circuit stuff, right? There is a general rule. If you are lost and if you don't know how to start doing, the smartest way to do this is step one. You calculate, number one, the total resistance here. Number one. Yeah, number one. You have to calculate this thing called the total resistance first. Or they call this the total effective resistance. Okay, we know that this is 3 ohm. We know that this is 3 ohm. So 3 ohm and 3 ohm, what happens? So we will calculate 1 over 3 equals to 1 over 3 plus 1 over 3. Zero. So 1 over R is 2 over 3. R is equals to 3 over 2 equals to 1.5 ohm. But don't forget, now I know this part is equivalent to 1.5 ohm already, right? But it is also series to the other 3 ohm, right? So my total resistance here is how much? It will be equivalent to 1.5. It will be equivalent to 1.5 times plus 3. So my total answer is 4.5. Oh my, right. correct or not? All right. So this, we go to question number two. Okay, so now we got V equals to IR. Okay, so step one, use total resistance here. Then your next step is your total voltage. So your voltage, this is 6, ma, right? I, ma, correct. Your total resistance is 4.5. Now, total R, this is your total R. Okay. So, 4.5. So, I get my calculation to be equals to 1.33 ampere. That's it. 1.33 current. So, nothing very complicated or very difficult. Okay. Now, so which, that this current is coming out to be equals to 1.33. 1.33, 1.33, like that. Okay. Now, how to find the orange color voltmeter? Can you use fraction? Not recommended. Y plus 3, not plus 1 over 3. You mean this one? Because they are in series, ah, low C. You know, series parallel. Parallel, you do 1 over. Lah. So when this one and this one, it, I combine this one to become 1 already, then Taman is series. Ma. So, Joe, yeah, who Okay, I can sense, right, guys, this batch, your punya calculation very bad. Okay, no, not calculation, sorry, electricity calculation very bad. So, okay, let's continue to the next part. Okay, now, so how do we find this orange color voltmeter? Hey guys, if I do like this, is it correct or not? So if I want to find this voltmeter, okay, uh, and what I do here is I use V equals to IR. So I know that my current mass here is 1.33. Then I times 3 here, so I get my total voltage to be 4 volts. Is this correct or wrong? Okay, if you don't know you correct or wrong, right, I teach you one way. So you know that this, okay, 
Guys, you should know this uh, voltage across this one and this one add together must be 6 volts, all right? All right. So this one already 4 volt. This one I calculate also 4 volt. If I add these two 4 volt together, it's already more than 6 volt, which means that this calculation is wrong. What is the proper method? Okay, you must remember, because your current reaches this jabang, right? Your current will split. So when your current split to the top and bottom, you will realize that your current here will be 0 0.67 ampere. Here will also be 0 0.67 ampere. Okay, why it will split equally? Why will split equally? Because both resistance is the same. All right? If it's not the same, then it won't split equally. Okay, so actually, if you don't want to do split, because split very fun, right? Okay, now today I will teach you a secret method. Okay, but it requires you to understand one thing first. Okay, first question, guys. Voltmeter 1 and voltmeter 2, the reading same or not? Same or different? Reading voltmeter 1 and voltmeter 2, same or different? Same, right? Okay. So the secret here, since they are the same, we can use this strategy whereby okay, we know that this current will flow through both of them, correct? So we take their total resistance, having the total resistance, which their total resistance will be equivalent to 1.5 volt, right? So I use, when I look at this thing, I can't turn the don't see. I look at the whole thing. So the total V equals to IR. My total current muscle is 1.33. My total resistance is 1.5 ohm. So if I do this calculation right now, this will be how much? One point nine nine five nine nine five volts. All right, can. Yes. Okay, it's about one point nine nine volt. Okay, I just put put it like that. Almost close to two volt now. Okay, can now of course. So which means that if you put two volts, also correct. Ah, so me it can turn turn. So me. What did you do? Wang Kai, why? Ah, okay, it'll be like 1.99999. Okay, actually, if I round up, right, if I round up, right, this should be about 2 volts because it's 1.995. Okay, so this this is one of the way whereby I use one step. I use one step. I don't even need to break this into current and I can straight away look at the overall picture. So my total current thing, like total, car, uh, total current come in, total voltage here. So I have 1.33. Total voltage, 1.5. So I can straight away get the voltage. Here 2, here 2. Ah, wait, hang on. That one is internal resistance. That one is battery, the internal resistance. Okay. Now, so obviously, uh, yes. Resistance parallel. Okay, we will see one later. If I find V of T first, then what? Of course, can. That is also one of the methods I recommend. Okay, guys. Some people will think that here very leche. Guys, some people will find here very leche. They say, hey, teacher, if I know that my current here is 1.33 ampere, let's say uh, 1.33 ampere, he say, she says that if I use V equals to IR, so my current here is 1.33, right? My resistance here is 3, right? So I realized that this is almost close to 4 volts. So if this is 6 volts, this is 4 volts. Can I take 6 minus 4? So my answer title is 2 volts. Also can, guys. This question you got like 20 way to solve. Mean by okay, step one, you use the one step method. Straight away count current, count this thing, you get answer. Step two is you use uh this one, you take six volt minus four volts, so you get two volts. This is step two. 
Step three, you split the current up and down. 0 0.67 ampere, 0 0.67 ampere. You split two current. So that is another method. And uh, all right. Okay. To let this thing be a bit more fun, okay. I'm going to uh give you a calculation question. After we solve this, when we do one more mini question, then we can go rest already. Okay, so it's like two more small parts only. Okay, let's look here. So what if I today give you a question like this? Okay, let's say this is 10 ohm. This is um 8 ohm. And let's say this is um 2 ohm. Okay. Your job now is to find how much is the current and how much is the voltmeter here. Okay, if let's say this is 12 volt, like you try and see how to do this, guys. Very simple. We solve this too, then we do one more part, then we can rest already. So come on, everybody. Let's continue. Okay, so like I say, if you feel very lost and you don't know how to start, step one is we will look at the total resistance here. So we will count this part, the total resistance first. So V equal, oh, sorry, uh, total resistance we will have 1 over R equals to 1 over 8 plus 1 over 2. So 1 over 8 is equivalent to 5 over 8. So R, 8, R equals to, um, 8 over 5, so this is equals to 1.6 ohm. Is it? Alright. So in this case, yeah, 1.6. So my total resistance here is 1.6 plus 10. So this will be equivalent to how much? Leh? It will be equivalent to 11.6 ohms. It will be equivalent to 11. Point 6 ohms. Okay, now, so if you got no tr problem already, this is to find your total R. Effective resistance. Step 2, you have to find V equals to IR. 12 equals to I 11.6. So your I will be equals to 12 to 11.6. You get 1.034 ampere. Okay, I'm just going to leave it at this way. Three four okay. I'm just gonna put three four five lah. Okay, um. Although we 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 don't write this five, but I put this five for calculation. Okay, see wrong now. So now I want to find the voltmeter here. Okay, I know that the current here is one point zero three four five. I don't need to care about the current ma so ma fun right. So I can just straight away do V equals to I R. Current is one point zero three four five ampere. The resistance tightly how much. 1.6 ohm right do because we've calculated that part is 1.6 so i straight away multiply by 1.6 i get 1.6 five five volts correct or i can use okay this one is one method or you can jury jury use this one you use v equals to ir your current is 10345 times 10, right? So you get 10.345, right? You take 12 minus 10.345, 12 minus 10.345, you also get 1.655. Just uh, you can get this as your volts, then you take 12 minus 1, this, this thing, 10.345. You get back the same exact reading. So black color is one number, the other one is what? Okay, black color is one method, this is another method. Okay, see Malcolm, because we don't really need to calculate the current in the 8 or in the 2, so I can straight away take the total current that will flow through them, total resistance, to count this. Okay, Malcolm, this one I cannot argue, you know. It's not like, teacher, you sure? Uh, I already proved the answer because you see, Malcolm, if I get, if I use this and I multiply this, I get 1.655, right? And when I take 1.035, 345, and I multiply by 10, I get this right. 
So by right, this voltage and this voltage should get back 12, right? So if I add these two to come back 12, I know my answer is sure correct. So we say either one voltmeter. Do one voltmeter only. Ah. Do one voltmeter only. Ah. Yeah, Ming Xing, you are right. Just, just the... Do this this question is calculate it only. Ah. Okay, you see, ah, uh, it's not like a fixed step. Okay, it's, it's not a fixed step. Okay. Um, even if I draw the. Okay, Nantao asks you a question, Xinghui. If I don't draw the vote meter, Nantao has a tongue, Xinghui, Pu Yang, me. I'm not going to be able to get the same. So if I draw two vote meter, ta, ta, or I draw one vote meter, or I don't draw vote meter, the voltage. Still not in the mind. It's like saying if I put M meter, then I'll not be inside your current. So if I don't put M meter, I'll not be in your current. Yeah, okay, can now. Ming Xing, okay, you see, guys, this is the, the problem why you all get very difficult with this is because. Actually, you all don't understand series and parallel. This is the masala yang paling besar. Okay, I feel like this year, punya students, you all tend to like skip all the basic stuff, and then you all just want to listen to the important stuff, like like the difficult stuff, those easy stuff. You you all will tend to forget. Yes, mention that's why. Because whatever voltage that goes up and down must be equal. Ah. The current will be different. Okay, see, uh, one very simple question. Uh, okay, we do a polar. Uh, we do a polar. Uh, okay, just to check. Okay, yeah, this is out of curiosity. Uh. Um. Okay, now guys, if today I ask you a question, the current in is 10 ampere. Come out, same as 10 ampere or less than 10 ampere. So when your current enter a light bulb, so the light bulb of course will bling, zhangzila. So if in out, Will it be same as 10 ampere? Guys, yeah, very fast one. I give you 10 seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. If we got 10 people who still haven't worked, takan, uh, wah, takan revision class, you book up computer to sleep, right? Ah, uh, fully, uh. Okay, so in this case, we got 30% of this class. Imagine guys, if you are here at 11 o'clock, you should be quite smart. If you are here at 11 o'clock, and we got 30% of people who don't know, the answer is the same. The answer is the same. Because current is actually your charge. It's like 10 electrons or 10 people. If 10 people enter the light bulb, go out, of course 10 people. Lah. It's the voltage that will reduce, not the current. Okay, so that's why you all skip now. It's a very important step. One of the very crucial basics is like, you don't even know in and out the same or not. You think you can solve this? Okay, can. All right. So you have to go through like, very simple basic stuff. 
like like even you know um are you guys seriously looking at formulas like for example okay, i don't even need to know this is series or parallel all i know is that for current it's like number of charges or the number of people if today i've got 10 people come here if six people speak here three people speak here guys how many people will be at the end it's definitely going to be one people right we got people who say 10 people wow, pandai. okay can now so i mean then are you seriously going to use a formula called i1 plus i2 plus i3 no right you can use your common sense to see how the network works right if I've got 10 people here, 6 people turn right, 4 people will move forward, 3 people turn right, I will remain with 1 person at the back. Ah. Okay, Ken? Now, Ming Xing, I want to answer your question later, but I don't want to answer your question now. Okay, your question was, if I want to find current, then how, right? Correct? Now, later I show you, since... Uh, I don't think they want to know. Okay, I'll show you later. Okay, now, but but you teasing more. Huh? Okay, so guys, this is on the calculation. You need to, um, guys, like do basic calculation first. This is considered difficult. I mean, this is considered above average already. All right. Uh... Equals to VI. Uh, current. Uh, okay, see it. You know, right? Like, for example, brightness of a bulb, there's this thing called 24V, let's say 36W, correct? So we will always check the power rating. Let's say if this, and let's say this, we will use this to judge whether is it brighter or not. So the one that says 36, what will be brighter? Meaning to say that, yeah, uh, this one take 24 volt can give 36 watt. So it take 24 volt only give 12 watt. So who brighter? Obviously the 36 watt. So, but if you really want to count, you can count the VI, the VI and compare who got more VI, who will be brighter, usually. Lah. I can, uh, based on my, cal my, my mental calculation, I think the 2 ohm the whole brighter for this one. Lah. Common, I mean, common sense, the two ohm will be right there. Okay, once we are done with this, let's go and see one last part. Okay, you see, uh, um, guys, last question already for today. Okay, I don't think you all can tahan already. Can we look at page 15? Lima Belas, page 15. Okay, so the question now comes. Which one is brighter? Explain your answer. Which one is brighter? Explain your answer. Okay, if we look at the voltage, if we look at the voltage, this is 1.5 volt. This is 1.5 volt. Correct. When this thing is in series, they will be added together. So just a total 3 volts. So this will get 3 volts. Then for this one, this is 1.5 volt. This is 1.5 volt. This is 1.5 volt. This is 1.5 volt. Correct. So parallel is the same. So supposingly, this will get 3 volts. EMF-wise is the same. But when I start pushing up the, the resist, I mean the current, right? Okay, there is one problem. You guys need to know what is EMF versus potential difference, guys. If today you don't know what is EMF and potential difference, then gone case already. Because why? Sekurang kurang near. You need to know what is the difference between EMF and potential difference. Example, guys, can you tell me EMF punya unit is what? Okay, let's just randomly call someone.
明讯 EMF 不叫 unit 是吧？啊、uh, ，OK， if you know that voltage， congratulations， 啊、uh, ， it's easy， yeah，、uh, you you pass the test。For people who don't know what is EMF and potential difference， on the right hand side， that's on the 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 if you look at the right hand side， there's a hashtag one， EMF versus potential bridge a、uh, difference fifteen minutes， that one， there is a difference there。Okay, Ken. All right. Now, so there's something called internal resistance also. So if we compare, guys, if I put a if I put this in like that, here I give you two ohm resistor, two ohm resistor. So the total resistance here will be four ohm, right? All right. But if now I've got four resistance here, one resistance, two resistance. Three resistance and four resistance. Okay, guys. Left hand side got two resistance. This one got four resistance. Which one has more total resistance, left or right? Which one got more total resistance, left or right? The answer is. The answer is count lah. This is two plus two. The total resistance here is four. This is two plus two plus two plus two. The total resistance is four parallel to four. So if this total resistance is four, this total resistance is. One over R equals to two over four R equals to two ohms. So therefore, here we actually have a difference of four ohms and two ohms as our total difference. You faham? So which means which one will be brighter? B will be brighter because it has lesser internal resistance. Okay, so how we're we gonna explain this thing? Okay, we can say that. Okay, guys, last part already. Ah, huh? so we can say that your diagram four point three B diagram four point three B is brighter than four point three A. Okay, this A. Four point three eight. Okay, why is this brighter than four point three eight? Okay, number one because your battery batteries are connected in parallel. They have lesser effective internal. Resistance. Okay. Remember, they they don't now. Nobody use total resistance for already. They use effective resistance. Second word already. Internal resistance. So therefore, more current will flow through four point three B. So therefore, brighter. Okay, not can. All right, can. Interesting. Can go up a bit, ah. Okay, because Esther, we are comparing in this question 
the internal resistance of the battery ma, because we're not comparing resistance but unless this is draw resistance they draw resistance but then can so since it's battery battery to see your internal resistance so we, we usually use internal resistance so therefore better to write internal okay again all right so yay guys we have survived almost close to two hours okay so congratulations all right um so i don't know if uh this is helpful or not but if uh you find this helpful then i hope hope you you can i might lah, okay guys i might uh do a bit more electricity the video on my channel however i only have one problem which is i don't think i can sempat do before this week which means i can't do it tomorrow i can't do it day after tomorrow i can't do it on tuesday i can't do it on wednesday um unless your exam is somewhere uh 15 16 17 then maybe you can sempat watch my video but it won't be next week it will be probably next weekend and to do those series parallel Welcome to your exam. I also don't know. Now, yeah, or oh, next Tuesday. Okay, can. So, yeah, for those people who have later exams, then you all probably can benefit. All right. Uh, at this point, guys, then just a lesser total. Okay, guys. You would like to ask repeat the question now, okay? Uh, internal resistance is because of battery. If resistor, you can write effective resistance, but battery, we will compare internal resistance. Okay, so consider what the suggestion. Okay, like turn up, all right? Some physical class. Okay, consider it, and pay your own time. All right, okay, again, because that's the only way. Because I think your problem is the twist and the problem, which online class very hard for me to see. I need to check the data. That's why I always suggest. Like for Bernice, Bernice can get no need. She can stay online forever. Okay, can now. So, okay, guys, if you guys got no problem, we will sampai sini sahaja. I wish everybody good luck for your coming exams. Make sure you finish this paper and do as much as possible. Um, I, I've also posted another one more. I will be posting another one more thing on the Google Classroom. So make sure, check your Google Classroom. If you have nothing to do, go to your Google Classroom. Scroll, scroll, scroll. Ui, got things to do. Okay, lah, do lah. Macam tu. Okay, Ken? So if you guys got no problem, so good night, everybody. Bye-bye.